this and all of them was late. So I'm gonna ruin it. Hopefully y'all gotta retake this. Hey, hey, I'm gonna ruin your record on December 9th. Hey, listen, did the big dummy come up with that song? <laughs> Because you are dry as gin. You dig what I'm saying? And you don't have no sin in you. Get out of here. <laughs>so, December 9th, San Francisco, the city that you were born in. What was it like being back there for the press conference? I mean, it was, you know, a dream come true. I've always dreamed to, to you know, when I was to make it, I was going to come back and, you know, do a, do a homecoming fight, do a fight for, for you know, my family, my friends and everything, but also just make it, make it affordable, make it to where everybody can, can, can come, can watch. Um, you know, I can inspire the kids, people before me, the people after me. So uh, this is all a dream come true of mine. Everything, you know, has come full circle for me. Born in San Francisco, <clears throat> raised in Oakland. What was life like for you growing up there? I mean, um, you know, I wouldn't be here if it, was, you know, it wasn't. It, it molded me to, 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 to be here. A lot of people don't make it out the, the bay. Um, but if you do, you, you're special. And I feel like, you know, I'm one of the special ones that, that made it out because uh, it, it bred me. You say you're one of the special ones that made it out. How hard was it to make it out? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard, obviously, because it's not a lot of us. It's not a, it's, you know, it's not like a big, you know, it's not a lot of people, so. Not a lot of people that actually are, are you know, big. So you know, our support system is, is, isn't that big. But, you know, I want to be the guy to uplift the guys, you know, coming, coming up after me, um, you know, and, and, and bring them with me. Your nickname is The Dream. When did boxing become the dream for you? Um, man, since I started getting out, of getting out of trouble as a kid, you know, it's, 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 it was, a, you know, a dream for my family, you know, to, to see me doing good, seeing me on the right path. Um, you know, in the beginning days, we never knew that I would make it, you know, this far. It was just to, to, to stop me from riding in school, stop me from riding in the streets and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's been a dream, this, this whole journey. Your uh, father, always in your corner, seemed like you guys were in lockstep with each other. How much of this was his dream for you as well? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really say. I, I don't really think that my dad knew that, you know, I was... I, I would make it this far, you know. I think it was just, you know, he was just you, trying to keep me out of trouble, trying to keep me on the right path. I was doing, I was doing boxing, I was doing football, um, and uh, but uh, as 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 long as journey, you know, he stayed down, I stayed down. We we started to see the vision, and uh, we stayed down. So this is a, definitely a dream come true for 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 us. You said keep you out of trouble a couple of times now. How much trouble were you getting in back in those days? Oh uh, man, when I was when I was young, I used to love to fight. Um, I used to get kicked out of this school and that school and that school, and that's how I started boxing mm -hmm. because I was I was always fighting, um, and we didn't know what it was. You know, we just knew that he loved to fight. He was he had anger issues, and um, so it was just to you know put something my energy somewhere else. And my dad was like, you know, if you want to keep fighting in school, I'm gonna take you to the gym. You're gonna get beat up. <laughs> I was like, all right. And uh, over time, you know, um, I started, you know, to get out. I stopped getting into trouble and, uh, uh, you know, I turned a, a negative into a positive. What were those first days at the gym like when you know, your dad brought you there, maybe thinking you would get beat up? Yeah. Uh, what were those first days like? I mean, those first days were, were, were crazy because I was sparring, you know, at a young age. I was sparring at a young age and also, you know, at the beginning stage, I didn't know what I was doing. I was basically just street fighting. but. You know, they said I was a natural, and, and it was like it, it did feel natural to me. It was, you know, I I didn't I wasn't like like I didn't have like butterflies you would as you would think. I was just doing what, what the stuff that I learned by just fighting in the streets. What was that first sparring session like? Do you remember it? Yeah, um, I sparred a kid. He was a kickboxer, and um, he was working on his stand up, and I sparred him, and I I remember I knocked him down. I knocked him out of his shoes, and. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, it was like, all right, like, I didn't like, it was like, it wasn't, it, it didn't feel like special to me. It was just like, it, it was like a natural thing. Mm -hmm. Not, not a good feeling then to see a guy see all that. No, work again. no. I mean, I was I was happy with it, but it wasn't like it wasn't like over the top for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I always been an athlete though. I used to play football. And I was star running back on my team, and um, yeah. When do you start looking at boxing like a career? That this is what you want to do with your life? <clears throat> yeah, um, around twelve, thirteen. That's when you know I started to really get serious and really you know see start to see the vision and. Uh, that was when I was like, I was putting my all, my all into it, and um, yeah. I was right around the time that you moved to Vegas, right? Yeah, so. and that's when that's when um, around that time is when I started doing homeschool and stuff like that because we saw the vision, we knew that you know I had something special, and um, 13 I did homeschool. Uh, that's when um, we was like, all right, we're gonna put our we're, we're gonna put our all into this. At the time. 12, 13, 14 years old. How'd you feel about kind of being uprooted and moved to Vegas? Yeah, I mean, it was it was whatever. You know, I wanted to be with my dad more than anything. Um, that was you know, I was living living with my mom, and you know, my dad had moved to Vegas, so I was like, all right, I wanna uh, I wanna go with my dad. I wanna be with my dad. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't it wasn't for boxing or anything else. It was just I just wanted to be with him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for boxing, but Vegas probably the boxing capital of at least the United States, maybe yeah. the entire world. What kind of Im impact did that have on your boxing career? Yeah, it had a, it had a huge impact. You know, um, I was I was able to rub shoulders with champions, the, the, the current champions, former champions, um, you know, the best trainers in the world. You know, you know growing, I grew up, grew up in the gym, you know, being in the gym. So um, it, 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 it molded me to be here where I am, you know, sparring the best fighters, learning from the best. And uh, yeah. What's... You know, father and son training duos can be hit or miss. Some work out incredibly, some are absolute disasters. What makes the relationship between you and your dad work? I mean, it's, it's real, it's organic, um, it's, it's, it's really us. And we also know how to, you know, separate the, the two, but the business side from the, 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 the father, son, son, father. How do you do that, though? That would seem to be a very I difficult I mean, thing to I do. Feel like, I feel like that's a sweet spot. You know, that's a sweet spot. You just got to know. Obviously, every relate, every father-son relationship, you know, has, you know, goes through things. But, you know, we we, we, we know how to deal with each other. And uh, it, it, it works for us. Not mm -hmm. saying, you know, it doesn't work for everybody, but it works for us. Mm -hmm. Did it ever, when you are younger, kind of blend together, the dad for versus sure, coach? For sure. You know, I remember at a young age, I used to be like, Dad, you only talk to me about boxing. <laughs> But you know, I was a kid, so you know, you just, you just, that's just, that's just what I felt at the time. But um, it is what it is, you know. That's it's, it's just father son mm -hmm. relationship, and I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, I wouldn't want to be, be fighting here, you know, back home, you know, in front of in front of our people, mm -hmm. with uh, with, with with anybody else. I'm happy that my dad is, you know, by my side, the, um, through the, this whole journey. The decision to turn pro. How did you? kind of come to that decision, what went into it? Um, you know, I was uh, I was fighting an amateur. I was a top amateur at the time um, before I turned, before I decided to turn pro. And they, they had bumped the, the, the age up on the Olympics. But I was I was literally at the Olympic Training Center, you know, training and all that. So I was like, my dad was like, you know what, let's, you know, let's just go pro. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's start focusing on, you know, turning pro and, and, you know, building our career up, you know, and, by the time, you know, these guys will be, you know, coming out of Olympics, you'll be, you know, able to fight for a world title or be be a contender or something like that. And um, I was like, yeah. So we, we spent the year just working on my pro style, training, you know, sparring world champions, this training camp to that training camp. And uh, that's when we made a decision. Was it disappointing at the time <clears throat> to, I'm sure you were looking to go to the Olympics, win a gold medal, do all the things that you've seen other fighters do growing up. At the time, was it disappointing? Of course, yeah, it was very disappointing. You know, my dream was to to to, you know, win a win a gold medal or, you know, go go to Olympics and experience that. But um, God, you know, is a perfect planner. Allah is a perfect planner. He he makes no mistakes. So, um, if I would have went to the Olympics, I wouldn't be in a position that I am in now. That, that I am in now. And when you turn pro. You followed your own path. You marched the beat kind of of your own drum. You went down to Mexico and took some fights. What were those fights like early in your career? Yeah, I mean, I was one of the first people to go to Mexico. Like, you know, before now, it's like, a you know, everyone doing it now. But I was, I was one of the few people when Mexico was like, they felt like Mexico was corrupt, you know, and a lot of people was telling us don't go. 
but I was one of the first few people to go. And um, yeah, I mean, it was literally bars, ballrooms. <laughs> I bought it into like a like a like a auditorium type 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 thing. Um, yeah, I was fighting anyway. It didn't, it didn't matter. <laughs> My dressing room was like closets and stuff like that. But um, I wouldn't want it any other way. And you know, guys could say that I that I had it the easy way, but I've shown that I wasn't. I didn't have it the easy way. I went to Mexico. I went to this city. I was fighting all over. You know, I didn't fight. This is my first real homecoming fight. I, this is really where I'm from now. So um, a lot of these guys fought in their cities in front of their fans for, for a long time to build their record. I was fighting in Mexico. You know, these <clears throat> prospects that come out of the Olympics, they have matchmakers and yeah. hand-picked opponents yeah. early on in your career. I'm guessing you didn't. And I'm wondering, like, who were these opponents you were getting and how were you getting them? And, and yeah, I mean, no, we was fighting anybody that really wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't about like, you know, we didn't have a matchmaker. We weren't, we didn't, we didn't come from a, you know, we was learning on the job really, to be honest. And we didn't come from like a promoter where, you know, they was building us up and, you know, putting money behind us. You know, we was doing it on our own. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, was, I had it the hard way. <laughs> I was fighting any style, you know, any, anybody to, to, to get a fight. Mm -hmm. What's the fight? from those early days that maybe you'll never forget? One that sticks out in your mind as kind of emblematic of your entire time down there. Um, it's a fight that um, I had fought in Mexico. And uh, before the fight, I told my dad, you know, I fought, the, I fought a guy out there. And then, um, you know, it was, I don't think it was the next fight. I think it was like a couple fights later. And then I told my dad, I said, um, dad, I think that's the same guy. <laughs> And he said, my dad said, no, that's not the same guy. Look at his name. His name is right there. I said, dad, look at his shoes. That's the same guy. <laughs> I think that's the same guy. And he was like, no, no, it's not the same guy. It's not the same guy. But in the back of my head, I really think it was the same guy. <laughs> Young fighter, you start racking up wins. Uh, when did the promoters start coming after you? When did you start? Not even, the promoter's been coming after me since before I even turned pro. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they, they've been reaching out to me. Every, every major promoter had reached out to me, you know, while I was on the building stage, before, um, yeah, so I had, everyone was after me. You probably turned down some guaranteed money to go your own path yeah, I turned, early on. Yeah, I turned down a lot of money. I turned down millions, really? um, you know, early on, early, where you know, I was a kid where money was like, what? Like, <laughs> crazy money. But uh, I trusted in the vision. I believed in my dad. I believed in, you know, his, his advice. And uh, so I, was, I saw the bigger picture. Do you feel that paid off when you first signed with Matchroom uh, yes. a few years ago? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to sign to no, to no one unless it was the right situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, what we were looking for in Matchroom was, gave us everything that we were looking for. So I definitely feel like it paid off. What um, were those years like early on? Because you pretty quickly had a version of the 135-pound title, but you just couldn't get the guys that you wanted to get in the ring. You were undefeated, you had some money behind you, you had a belt, but whether it was Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, at that time, you couldn't get them. What were those years like? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was frustrating because it was like the world was, came with this email stuff. They weren't acknowledging me like a real champion. Um, you know, I wasn't getting my respect. I felt like I deserved. And I also couldn't get the guys in the ring because they didn't feel like I, had, I was a real champion. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they knew that, you know, the threat that I, that I brought. So it was like he's not a real champion, and he's you know threat. Why why will we why will we take the chance? Mm -hmm. So it was it was frustrating, um, but like I said, Allah is a perfect planner. He makes no mistakes. So that's when, without that version of the the WBC or whatever, however you want to make it, even though I still feel like I was champion, I know I was champion. Um, I wouldn't have been able to get the undisputed shot at George Cambosis and become undisputed. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if, if I didn't have that, that WBC belt. So it all worked out in the end. When <clears throat> Cambosis knocks off Teofimo, how quickly do you start thinking, I want George Cambosis? Uh, instantly. Um, it, was, it was, I wanted Tio. I thought Tio would win, but I knew that, you know, George was a live dog. I knew that he was coming to fight. I knew that he was, that he was somebody to be taken serious. Um, but as soon as that, after that, as soon as uh, Cambosis won, it was instantly my eyes, my gears, you know, were towards Cambosis. You had to fight twice in Australia. You had to beat Cambosis, and then you had to go back and beat him again. Uh, was that, did you even give any thought to when you were, you were negotiating to, hey, I don't want to do that. I don't want to fight him twice. How quickly were you, did you accept 
that you could go down there. Yeah, I mean, it was it was more like a take it or leave it type mm -hmm. of deal. It wasn't. Um, I, I could, couldn't get I couldn't put much thought into it. It was more like, you know, this is this is what we're offering, and if you if you want to fight, take it or leave it. And uh, they said you have a day, you have a day to to make up your mind. Twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell anybody. If you tell anybody, the deal is off the table. And uh, so I was just had to just think on it as much as I could, and uh, not tell anybody, not talk to anybody. It was just me and my dad, and uh, I said, let's do it. Mm -hmm. No matter what the, I, at the, honestly, I didn't even know what, what Cambosis was, was making, what he was gonna make. I knew what I was gonna make, and uh, I knew it was gonna be a lot less than him. I knew it was gonna be far less than him. I knew, he, but uh, it was like, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, wh whatever money they're offering, um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna take it. You're undisputed at 135, and you could pretty much do anything after that. I don't think anyone would have begrudged you from taking a lesser fight. But you decide you want to take on arguably the best man at that time in Vasily Lomachenko. Why was it important to you to face Lomachenko? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was more like personal because when Loma had the belts, he didn't want, he didn't want to give me a shot. And, uh, you know, a, a, a part of me was saying, you know, don't give him a shot. Do him the same way that you did me, but a part of, a part of the same way he did me. But a part of me was saying, Give him the shot, beat him, and, sh and, and, sh and show the world that you're a true champion. And uh, that's what I did. You had to go dig deep to win that fight. Um, was that the most challenging in-ring experience that you've had? Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a, a, a tough fight. It was my toughest fight uh, up to date. But, um, you know, it, it was a competitive fight. But, you know, that's where people get confused. That they, they say competitive fights in boxing are robberies. They mistake them for robberies. When if it's a close fight, it's not a robbery, mm -hmm. you know. Um, which I definitely feel like I won the fight. Um, I banked a lot of the er early rounds, and uh, he had, you know, two big rounds that, you know, sh made a lot of people think that you know he did a lot more than he did. But um, I, the last round is the round that I needed, and I took it. Yeah, I agree with you. When you have two A-level fighters fighting each other, it's going to be close no matter what. Mm -hmm. It should be close when you have two guys like that. But did the kind of social media backlash from some corners bother you in the aftermath? No, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people love to hate me. You know, um, I don't know what it is. I don't Does know that bother it, you? I, no, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm, I embrace it now uh, because what can I do? I, it's, I'm me. You know, uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't it wouldn't be right if they did it any other way. If they were showing me too much love, I'd be like, "What's up with these guys?" But they think I'm they think I'm not the real deal or something. <laughs> so it is what it is. They they they, they hate the greats, and then at the, after they were they respect them and mm -hmm. they applaud them. So uh, they can say what they want to say. Um, I know I know what type of fighter I am. Uh, I'm secure of myself, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna keep beating whoever they put in front of me one by one.